Hello, everybody, and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today, we once again say hello to Cesare Paltasso. Hey, Cesare, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. It's good to be back. Yeah, thanks for joining. The last time you were here, we talked about beautiful APIs, and you showed us some visualizations around APIs, kind of a snapshot of APIs. This time, we'll look at beautiful API evolution, so a different visualization that you came up with that also looks at APIs, but in this in this case, around how they're evolving over time. And I'm really curious how this will look like. Can you just give us a very brief background on why you were thinking that maybe this kind of visualization might be interesting? Well, we, we were interesting to, to look at how people um, introduce changes in, in APIs because we always hear that uh, you, you should uh, never break your clients and uh, always grow an API as opposed to, you know, it's, it's easy to extend an API, but you should never remove existing features. And uh, the, the goal was to, to, to see what happens in the real world. Uh, we, we looked at uh, the, same, the same source as for the other visualizations, but we didn't just look at the most recent version. Uh, but we went back in the history and looking uh, and comparing all all the commits that that were actually done to to the API specifications. And you've also turned that into another ebook that contains a lot of beautiful examples. I think it's really, it's something I, I just like. I just like the graphical quality of them, to be to be honest. But I also like what they are visualizing. So let's jump right into it and see what beautiful API evolution can look like. And I think. You started with a really nice metaphor that all of this is built on. So what are we looking at here? And uh, the metaphor is uh, taken from the three rings. So when you when you slice a tree, then you see that the oldest part is in the center. And then you can track how fast was the tree growing by looking at the distance uh, between the rings that show how much uh, uh, wood was added uh, every year. And um, we took the same uh, inspiration to, to, to actually show that the, the oldest version of the API is in the center and the most recent one is on the outer ring. And this has uh, the advantage that since, you know, we expected that APIs would grow, the outer ring has more space so we can show more things. Um, so that's, that's sort of the, the main interpretation that, that you can give to to the APIs. Mm -hmm. Also, in the previous in the previous uh, video, you 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 show also API structure shown as trees, and now we also take the same metaphor uh, to show how they evolve. Okay, this time we're just slicing the trees. Okay, let's start looking at um, how this actually works for the APIs that you looked at, that you analyzed, and how this maps into this tree metaphor of tree rings and how those evolve over time. Okay, so uh, as with every as with every visualization, we are abstracting uh, the the specifications of the API, which have a lot of information, and we transform those into pixels. So uh, we actually are leaving a lot of details out. And uh, what you see here is um, a visualization of an API, which uh, begins uh, with the first version in the in the center. And every, every line that you see is actually an operation of the API. And the color striped represent, again, the same color coding as uh, with the other visualization. We show the different methods that are attached to these operations. So in the simplest case, um, we can see here uh, this API that has evolved for five days, all over 16 comets, and uh, has grown to have uh, 36 different paths. Uh, you can see some of the stripes are longer. Uh, because they are older and they have been introduced earlier and they have stayed until the end, some of these stripes uh, disappear. This means that uh, from, from this point on, the, the, the actual method is no longer present. So this is a very young tree, so to speak, just five days. That's a very short, short lifespan for an API. But what, you, what you're seeing, just to re remind our viewers here, what you're seeing is basically just commits to a repo somewhere, right? So it doesn't really say so much around how long this API is used. It's more like the development time time steps, uh, right? That's that's correct. We we are tracking the the development history. So we our source is a repository in which we have commits, and every commit has a has a timestamp, and we assume that uh, 
uh, we can order the commits uh, along the time axis. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is also interesting is that uh, operations added to a path uh, can change. So there are, uh, in this example, we see that, uh, for example, this, uh, this path uh, was born as a, as a read-only operation. And at a certain point, uh, a post operation was added. The yellow stripe represents a post operation. And this change was actually introduced for a brief time. And then it actually went uh, and became stable uh, after a longer time. So this uh, basically helps to show that in some cases, the change is very, very small, right? You already, you keep the same path and then you're just changing the set of methods. <laughs> You, you can almost, you know, speculate around like the history of this, right? Where they edit post and they remove post, and then maybe they got some feedback where people say, "Hey, where did this post go? I really liked it," and then they had to add it back in again. Maybe there is some story around this. Yes, that, that's correct. Also, also in this case here, you you see that the the change was not uh, introduced once, and then it it stayed. You can actually see the uh, mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, over over several commits um, this is an example where you start uh, from a read-only api so you can see in the in the center part there's only one color and then mm -hmm. you add some uh, some post uh, endpoints later and there is even one case in which you do this switch so the the endpoint that used to be a get becomes a post for some reason some more i think interesting observations maybe here Yes. So to the last, the last thing that you need to know to interpret the um, visualization is related to the time aspect. So every um, the the distance from the center is measured in terms of commits. However, the withdraw rings that are uh, showing the time. So what does that mean? Well, if you if you have uh, this this example here, the API is actually uh, a little bit more than one year old. So you can tell that because it has two rings. And these rings are shown on the commit that happened uh, with the six months uh, of, of uh, delay from, from one commit to the other. So in this case, the, the inner circle is uh, the first six months of the evolution. And then you have the outer circle, which is the next six months. Uh, in the data set, we have APIs that are five year old uh, or so. So we, we thought six months was enough to, to show uh, you know, some, some uh, some indication of how, how the evolution work. And that, that is important, for example, in this case, because you see that there was a lot of work on the API at the beginning of its lifetime. The first six months had most of the commits, and then basically nothing happened, uh, you know, only only few commits every every year or so as, as the API grew older. So the, so the spacing of the commits in the visualization, that is equidistant. They always have the same distance. So it's it's scaled by commits, and then the the time is something you just put in with those rings. Exactly to give a reference okay. uh, to yeah. because the, the commits have a day uh, associated with them. They have a, a timestamp. Uh -huh. It is really nice. This is like a real tree, right? Where you have the same th thing where the tree rings sometimes depending on how well the year was, right? If it was a very dry year, the tree ring is very small. If it was a good year for the tree, the ring the ring is much bigger. So I, I think it's a, it's another nice analogy to to the tree metaphor that you started with. Yes, that helps us a lot to reflect on the stability of the API in in that sense, right? That we we like tree, trees to grow a lot. I don't know if you if you like APIs to change that much after a certain age. <laughs> and in this case, uh, this is probably a, a good example of um, an API that after the initial burst of activity, then it sort of settles down, and you have few minor touches afterwards. It's a good point, actually, to you know think about what what would I like to see, so to speak, ideally. But if you think what most people are saying now that you know APIs should be products that are kind of actively managed, and that you look at how consumers like it, what consumers maybe would like to see being changed, then it seems that if an API is being used, then very likely people also have ideas of how it could be improved. And, and then maybe it would be nice to have at least some growth, so to speak, or some commits, you know, always happening as, as a sign that it's actively supported as, as a product that, that improves over time. 
Yes, and then it's also possible that these comets uh, don't necessarily impact the structure. So when we're visualizing here is the structure as a set of parts and, and operations. It's, we also see many times uh, comets don't change that, but they maybe they improve the documentation or they, you know, they add yeah. more, more details uh, somewhere else. Yes. That's a good point. Yeah. So, so as you said in the beginning, right, like what we see here is really like a very reduced representation of what an API is or what happens with the API. So we're not seeing everything. But for example, if new features were being added, right, this is the kind of thing we definitely would see here. Yeah. Um, yes, and then and then we can also see these. Um, um, you know, this is one example where when you apply this visualization, you know, in 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 here, you sort of see that there was a comet which completely removed the, uh, a large number of existing parts, which are no longer there. And uh, close to that point, also new parts were added, and these ones uh, now became uh, very stable and they lasted until the end. So basically, this, this visualization shows you that the, the API had done a very big change at some point in its history. Yeah, this that, that does look like a pretty radical change there. <laughs> yes, and that was also a question that we were, we were curious about, right? Is, is In this case, we, we can really see that what was there at the beginning uh, is gone at the end, right? So uh, this is also a similar example where, where you have like actually three three different. Uh, so this is the oldest part, which disappeared. This was something that was introduced later, also disappeared at the same time. So maybe like an attempt to 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 replicate. And then this this was what uh, replaced it with. So this, and then also this part didn't stay very long. And then this is uh, the <laughs> most recent part that have a, has a life of its own. So. This has actually quite a, quite an interesting history, I would say. Like when you see this kind of pattern, right? It really begs the question: Is this even like one API that you're talking about? Right? It, technically, it is because in the repo it was always one open API spec. But from like the changes that you were also just saying, right? It's like well, there were several occasions when they completely <laughs> changed everything. And then it's really, yeah, maybe it's, you could call it the same API, but it, it, it really isn't. Yeah, the, these are uh, visualization take literally the, the paths. So in case you change, uh, you rename a path that is in the, in the root of the, of the structure. For example, you, you go from slash version one to slash version two, uh, then this will affect all the, all the rest uh, of, of the structure. And that, that could be a reason. I mean, I, I don't know if this is a, the reason for this example, but uh -huh. it, it can happen that uh, this very small renaming of a path, which in any case is a breaking change, will have a big impact on, on, the, on the visualization. This one is uh, 81 parts, and it has the property that uh, once you introduce uh, something in the API, you keep it there forever. So forever, of course, as long as we can see, right? Maybe tomorrow they're going to completely change it. but. It's uh, very rare to see this this behavior, yeah. and the visualization really it really stands out, right? Because you you have this complete outer ring, and then you can see the gaps in the center, which represent when when the the feature was actually added. So you can sort of see how old is a particular feature based on the length of the stripe. Yeah. So this looks like an exceptionally stable API, then, right? I mean, most of the resources that are there now were there from the very beginning. And then over time, there were a couple of times when they added new ones, but not too many and, and kind of carefully, it seems, you know, it's like a couple here, a couple here. So it really seems to be something that probably works well and that just needs a couple of additions to maybe satisfy new use cases or something like this. But overall, right, it's, it's a very, very stable API. Uh, this one is not so regular. And uh, it, it shows that uh, the, the designers were not uh, afraid of experimenting and, and publishing uh, features that uh, were immediately uh, removed, for example, right? This, this little part over here, or this part over here. They... But it's strange how they, you know, it's like they, some of them were like added and removed like a whole bunch of times. Yes, also, also over here, we can see that this is discontinuous. So yeah. it's, uh, Kind of kind of interesting there to, to see what, yeah. what exactly was going on and then uh, uh, this this one uh, yes it's I, I included it because uh, it shows you that basically only this path over here on the right has the one is as to the test of time right it was there at the very beginning and then over 
uh, okay, only five months, but 132 commits, and it actually went all the way to the end. Uh, these ones are more recent additions, and this one didn't survive, and they were cut. So um, this one has a Ooh. sort of similar, like the previous one. What does it remind you of? Well, I mean, this one also looks like something that is relatively stable. There's not that much stuff that that has been removed, but it it was it's it's not quite as stable as the one that we saw before, where really there were just these very tiny parts where they added things. Yes, and this is also relatively old, right? For more than three three years, and uh, the the developers uh, have consistently used uh, these three colors over all the time, right? They they have the read only part of the API, and then there are the other ones you can do post and delete, but. They didn't go uh, with uh, with other methods of, of HTTP. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so that also um, shows you how consistent are, are the designer over time. Not not just to use the same structures on one version, but also over time they keep using the same. So that's that's interesting. Um, yeah, this is probably the 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 holy grail of what I was looking for when when I uh, <laughs> when I started to to do this. And uh, it's not so easy to see because of the resolution of the of the screen. But in the center, we have a completely yellow uh, type of stripes. So this is, uh, you know, the famous post only or RPC only type of API. And then at some point in its history, uh, they made a transition and they started to actually use more colors. So we, I don't know if you could uh, really claim that it's restful because you know. Uh, Using an API, open API specification to check whether an API is RESTful is, is still uh, an open. I don't know if you can do that, uh, but uh, definitely there was a there was a very big transition, right, in terms of how this API uh, looked like. So we we could uh, we could sort of say that this this was an API that over its evolution started as RPC style and then ended up as being a little bit more yeah, HTTP friendly. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and it's it's right. It's very colorful compared to, and then very irregularly colorful compared to the previous example, which just had these these red, uh, yellow, and, and green things. Yeah. Yes, it's also it's also relatively large. That has uh, yeah. close to two hundred parts. All yeah. right. Cool. So I think that was that was a good a good tour of some APIs where we looked at the visualization. And, and again, I, I, just, I just like how they look. I just think they are beautiful indeed. But I think it's also something where we can just think about now, how could that be useful? And I think in our conversation already, we, you know, it was interesting how we speculated around certain things. And of course, we kind of are lacking some information sometimes to really understand what was going on but just i think just spawning these conversations from looking at visualizations already is something that that is useful so i'm wondering how do you see how these visualizations maybe could be used outside just from visualizing this but as part of let's say a more regular part of an api life cycle well when um, the, the usual perspective of most um, API versioning tools is that uh, you, you have the open API specification and you're making a change and they highlight the diff, right? You, you can see yeah. which parts were added, which parts were removed, but you always have a very uh, short-term perspective. You compare what you're doing compared to the current version. Yeah. And uh, this, this uh, what we're doing is actually try to reconstruct uh, the whole history and have a much uh, longer perspective. You know, over over time, and uh, I don't and know I, if, if this uh, this perspective is is useful for for developers, right? Because I guess they are always looking towards the future. So I don't know if if it's useful for them to reflect about the past. I think it might be. It it's something where you know, if if I was a developer and I would I would um, let's say commit a new version or you know like think about committing a new version of an API. Having this view of understanding how much I changed and how much was changed before, and just getting this idea of you know what, like we're really we're really turning this into like a completely different API, right? At some point, and I think that just could be useful also as part of API product management that you can 
you, you just have one more piece of information, let's say, to reflect on how did this product evolve? How am I maybe planning to evolve it further? Is it something that maybe now I can think about, should I maybe create a new product instead of, you know, like morphing the old product over time into something that's completely different? And I think that at least in some of the examples, right, you really had these things where you said, well, that is not the same API anymore. Yes, and you you can also see uh, it would be great if you could actually apply this to to APIs that have a much much longer history to to be able to to see, yeah. for example, uh, whether an organization has a regular rhythm for making new releases, and and you you can sort of say, okay, every year the API morphs in, into into a new version. Or how how you know whether whether what's what's driving these changes right are our clients you know an API becomes very popular and then you know in, inevitably there are clients that have other requirements so the API has to has to change the, these these things uh, are we can only speculate right we, we we see we see these histories and um, we the visualization makes you ask questions uh, but of course, then you have to go go back to to the developers, or you know, go dig, dig deeper to actually answer them. But I think it would be nice to have that actually as part of API documentation. Like one of the things that I always think would be really nice, and it's kind of hard to do, is to say if you let's say you use semantic versioning and you're really kind of careful using version numbers in a particular way, it always would be nice to be able to tell people, look, you looked at 1.3 and now we have 1.7 here are the differences between 1.3 and 1.7 right that would be very useful for people to understand what is my understanding of the api and what is the current status and really just looking at that diff so to speak right between two given versions and, and that's kind of hard to do because like you said right typically you just get a diff from one version to the next one but i think at least as as a starting point something like this also could give me a good idea of was were there many changes or maybe these are almost the same right so maybe the jump from 1.3 to 1.7 isn't such a big thing so i think it could be a very useful piece of information just as an addition to document apis in, in a better way yes it could also be useful for developers to know which features are stable and they have been there for a long time and which are the the parts that are uh, you know rec recently introduced and therefore you know as a hypothesis they could uh, be still subject of, of further changes as, as we saw before with these uh, with these things that were like uh, introduced removed several times so if, yeah, you, yeah. if you start to depend on something very recent right may that's just a hypothesis you you know uh, do you really want to do that as opposed to depending on something that is very mature and of course, is uh, is not deprecated yet. Of course, that's that's also something that we have ignored so far in the in the visualization. We we do have a few examples yeah. where before before something disappears, then it's actually deprecated, but uh, not not that many, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I think it is not not a feature that a lot of people are using in a very disciplined way. That's true. And we did see these APIs where like some feature appeared, disappeared, appeared, disappeared, appeared, disappeared, right? So if you look, if you see something like this, you might say, mm, maybe I'm not using that one. If it has like this, this um, kind of mixed history of being actually in the API. Yeah, but uh, looking at versioning practices and, and uh, seeing how many versions are present uh, at the same time or whether how, how the transition between different versions happens, that's definitely something very fascinating to 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 look at, you know given given all the data that we we have accumulated we we are planning to look into that definitely do do you think that would be something something interesting to as a as an empirical study yes i think it would be fascinating i mean one of the things that that i think right now you can't do because of the the data set that you have right is like you you depend on the one open API file that has evolved over time, like in a repo kind of as one asset. And I think you, the, the method that you've developed is something that you could equally well use in examples uh, where people have different open API specifications, right? You, you could just feed it to the visualization and then see how things have changed, even though they're 
like differently managed versions, but that that also might be interesting just to see, okay, how did we evolve this API product, let's, let's say over time through different versions. And then I think if you're doing that more explicitly, then you could just make that part of your general API lifecycle management. And I think that that could be very useful and, and at least an, in, an interesting additional input at the very least, I would say. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great idea. I mean, so far we have a cluster together based on the repository from from GitHub where these uh, specifications are stored. But on GitHub uh, there is the fork fork uh, feature, right? That you can always uh, oh. start start a new history for from a certain point in the in the previous one, and that's also something which uh, you know the visualization is actually agnostic of, of where do these uh, sequence of commits come from. So it would be interesting to also try to to look at forks and, and also try to use this to compare APIs that are similar. Uh, maybe maybe you have cases of co-evolution, right? And the multiple multiple APIs related to each other. Do they do they advance in lockstep? Uh, so that, that these are all things that could be very interesting to look at. The moment that you you don't just focus on one single API, but you have a whole collection and somehow they are related to each other. It would be fantastic. Yes. Be fantastic. I think yeah. that would be interesting, yeah. To, to look at a microservice architecture where you have all the microservices that each has a, a different API, but some somehow you know they, they are evolving together. That, that's something that it's it's very hard to do on the open GitHub because people don't have a tendency to say, yeah, this is a microservice and it goes together with the other one. Uh, that's that's very hard to reconstruct uh, automatically. Yeah, that's true. There, there. You, you kind of need more of a dependency graph, something you can work with that would allow you to to get this kind of input. So, as we can see, your work is not yet done. You have a very, very good starting point, and I think it's already pretty, pretty nice and useful in my mind. But there's more that that could be done, and I think, like you said, right, the, the deeper you would actually understand the APIs that you work with, the more interesting um, applications of this you probably would be able to find. Okay, Cesare, thank you so much for joining again. You're now part of the Elite Two Timers Club. <laughs> it's very small. Oh, thank <laughs> Thanks for uh, walking us through these visualizations. There is, and I will, I will link it from somewhere down below here. There is a an ebook available for this if you're interested in, in looking at more of these like beautiful pictures. You can you can do that. You have how many visualizations are there in there, Cesare? Uh, we we have selected 50, 50 different histories, 50. Uh, okay. and mainly mainly for the visual appearance, right? So uh, this this mm -hmm. is meant to be a data data art uh, book that you, of course you you can look at it because it looks uh, fun, you know, looks nice, but also yeah, there is a meaning behind it. Yeah. And you can just come up with these stories like we did a little bit, you know, it's like I wonder what happened here. So that's I think I think that's just interesting. Okay. Thanks again, Cesare, for joining. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. Until next time, see you. Bye, everybody. Bye.